Well guys, welcome uh, back to the channel. Welcome to USC Aikens practice facility here in Aiken, South Carolina. The place is absolutely pure. I mean, look at this place. We have overseated tee boxes. We have target greens. We have the works. Uh, but today's video, we're gonna be working and getting after it with the full swing. Now, although I did play extremely well at the Butterfield, there's some things in my golf swing that I kinda wanna work on to get ironed out because, as you guys know, we have second stage of Q School coming up, and I really want to be dialed in as much as I can for that event. So, with the help of V1, we're gonna kinda break down what I'm doing now, see what I need to work on in the next few days, and then, and then, we're gonna talk about, in detail, the Butterfield Bermuda Championship, rounds one through four, kind of give some insight what I was feeling. You know, I've had a week to, to kind of think about the event and we're gonna dive into it after we work on it. So, let's buckle up, get some coffee, get some chai tea, and let's get to work. One swing in, good divot, I like the swing. I mean, shoot, today might be a good day. All right, so the tripod, we have it set up. Um, I will say for, if you guys are filming your swings at home, um, try to get it, up, or get it around hip height. Again, you don't want it too high, you don't want it too low. Uh, around hip height is good. And then get it as close as you can to, to the toe line. So you want the camera down the toe line. Um, that's the optimal, optimal angle in my opinion. Um, but we got a six iron. Last week, the, the mid irons, the long irons are what honestly cost me some strokes. Now I did hit a lot of great ones, but for the most part, I couldn't find my rhythm and tempo and something was off with my four, five, and six irons for the whole week. So that's what we're gonna look at today. I'm using the V1 Golf app, draw some lines, um, see if it is doing what I think it's doing. Um, and then after, do some do some swings to kind of ingrain the feels, exaggerate. And honestly, in, in four or five days, I think we should be in a really, really good spot. Actually, not should, we, we, we will be in a good spot uh, for second stage of Q School, Kindle Force. Let's go. I think that's what we're looking for. It wasn't like a pure strike. It was a little right. This, we might need. We might be seeing what we need to see here. Now the flip side of it is, I wish it was a perfect swing and I could just look. Man, that's beautiful. But you you want to film and and capture the ones that are a little off because then you can uh, work on it and get better. Also, shout out to V1 Golf for being a great partner of ours over the years. Um, I've used their used their system, their software, for probably 20 years now. That dad grew up teaching with it. Um, me and Wesley learned using it. And honestly, it's the best. And honestly, one of the best things about it is, you know, I can film my swing, send it to my dad, and he then can go in the app, give me a little lesson, say, hey, hey George, draw some lines, that's what you're doing wrong, send me a text, and, and I can watch the lesson there on my phone. And so, like, as annoying as it is getting 20,000 text messages from him, it is more helpful than not, uh, for sure, because again, it's, it's on your phone, it's in your hands, and a little tweak here and there, and you're good to go. All right, now, my swing. Let's draw some lines here, draw a plain line first. There, line, plain line going, looks good. Um, then I'll draw a butt line to see if I, my hips are staying back on it. Um, we'll draw another plain line to see, kind of go through the ball and the elbow, kind of the slot, if you will, um, and go from there. Really, uh, shoot, great takeaway right there in the middle, right where I'd want to see it. My hand, I think I could get a little deeper with my rotation or with my with my turn, get my hands a little closer to that line. But again, I'm not worried about it. The one thing, however, I'm gonna look at after. My butt stays on the line, like that's all great. Um, but right here, from the top of my backswing, a lot of play that, you know, before going down. Like, I would like to see my arms come down and my hips kind of wait just a split second which would then, um, yeah, which would then cause me or allow me to um, just pivot and rotate freely and not flip. Because you'll see right here a little club face rotation, not a lot, but like again, just enough where it's savvy and flippy. And if your timing gets off, could really lead to some inconsistent lead to some inconsistencies. But again, golf swing as a whole is great. So right there, top of the golf swing. Now look at the plane again. A little probably hair above again the club. The hands are on the upper echelon of it. Upper echelon, does that even make sense? I don't know. The upper line, uh, the upper parameters that I would like to see it. But the club drops, you know, kind of right in the slot. Um, again, we're talking fractions. I'd like to see my hands a little lower and the club a little more 
on the forearm instead of right above it. Um, but again, that's just me nitpicking. Um, but yeah, that's that's a good golf swing for a, for a miss. You know what I mean? Like, if this is my miss for four days next week, we're gonna be in a good spot. Now I know there was a lot going on, but from what I saw, the the main things I'm gonna be working on for the rest of the afternoon, get my hands in good position at the top, but then slightly just getting them to go a little bit first, a little smoother in this transition, then just pivot and rotate, and that should kind of take out some of that flip. Um, try to get maybe not be afraid, try to drop it a little bit underneath it to get just you know a hair more um on plane or underneath the plane not underneath the plane a little more on plane but again what i'm seeing here is great like we can absolutely make this work um so that being said actually that's what we're gonna do so we're gonna send that we're gonna go and see if dad's on the same page uh as me i'm sending it to my coach selecting g3 the george ryan golf academy as uh as my coach sending it to him um and let him give me some feedback uh, this afternoon or t tonight. But if you guys want to send in, uh, go search Brian Bros Golf. We're, we're in there as coaches. If you want to send some of your swing videos in here, we may or may not give them a look um, and some, send some stuff back to you. But we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna get after it. We're gonna work on really just slowing this tempo out. Maybe trying to get a little bit deeper, getting those hands to drop a little more on plane, and pivot. Also, I forgot to mention, um, the link is in the description for downloading the V1 Golf app. So go, go give it a download and um, let's get better together. All right, turn, bam. a little better pivot I, I still can ex exaggerate that kind of that first move just being slower right here not slower just smoother and then rotating just got to get those arms to come down a little bit first and then uh, but yeah those I mean just those swings right there uh, the ball flight all matched up and it felt I mean, it felt right so that's all we need to see today uh, so shout out to V1 uh, you guys are amazing I mean simple little things can make a uh, make a big difference just that little line just seeing my forearm being a little above the plane, or what I'd like to be it at. Um, seeing that, uh, just yeah, just right there. Um, now, now, let's talk about the Butterfield Bermuda Championship. All right, guys. So we've had I don't know a week and a half, two weeks to really think about what the heck happened at the Butterfield Bermuda Championship. So really, it was it was like a perfect week on uh, just about every front. So professionally, I've always wanted to play in a PJ Tour event and compete at the highest level i did that and and played really well uh socially and i guess professionally part two like i create content and and make videos and you know you know and have you guys come along our journey and to do it at such a pretty good level i think i mean the stuff i created was i enjoyed it um it all did really well so that was you know really cool and amazing but then you know having the whole family there having mom dad watch me in my first tour event have my wife there which i should i should have listed her first but mom and dad came off the tongue first i apologize mills if you're watching this uh, but having them three to watch my first tee shot in a pj tour event is something you really can't describe and then you know after watching all the videos back you know seeing me and wesley how much you know we how much fun we had together how you know we were hugging each other high-fiving and doing what we do you know day to day but doing it in a pj tour event is something you really can't put words to so we'll go over the cool moments but one of the coolest moments is seeing how genuinely excited he was for me playing in a tour event, me living my dream, and having his highlight be the chip in that I had and hearing the roars, or the roar, there was like 10 people there clapping and going crazy, but hearing the reaction to my hole out on hole seven was his highlight of his week, which is really something, you know, I knew he means it, or I knew he meant it, and you could tell when he's telling it that he really, truly uh, was excited for me and that's something that like as a brother and as someone that we we both are each other's number one fan is really amazing but now let's get into the round by round so round number one you know we're teeing off like i'm telling you i've talked about a lot that that moment that feeling of going through my routine and walking into the ball and feeling like a feather light everything's being fast everything's going a million miles a second but also being slow is the weirdest and most amazing uh feeling you know that you can experience as a competitor 
it's honestly something that's very addicting and, and now that i've experienced it i want to have it more i want to play in another pj tour event and compete just so i can feel those nerves and see if i can execute so that got the day started uh but burning the first two holes um i mean you can't make it up it's like a storybook you know burning your first hole on the pj tour um is is pretty wild you know i've waited 30 plus years and then to come out and make that and, and birdie the first hole is is pretty crazy and the cool thing about that that first round is you guys saw it like birdie the first two holes then we go to hole three four five six seven i think we birdied seven so yeah so we we're three under was it seven yeah three under through seven like playing really solid golf just like playing like i mean i belong there which is a first time experience you don't know that if you're going to do that so like 300 through seven and then some minor turbulence comes where i get back to one under but then to like get it back all the way to three under again or two under and not completely go go backwards is something that's um i'm very very proud of um and then the darkness comes 17 18 we're rushing i three putt 17 because get a little fast but then to finish 18 we're standing we hit a we bomb a drive uh absolutely stripe a wedge it spins down the hill all right we're faced with in very, I'd say nine out, eight out of 10 difficulty up and down. It's dark. People are watching my first tour event. If I get up and down, I'll shoot 60s in my first tour event. And to pull that shot off and do it, and you saw the fist pump there, and put a bow on round one, 69, yes, the wind wasn't blowing. It could have been three or four strokes lower, but like all things considered was amazing. Like I gave it a fist pump, like a little one, but inside I was like, yes, come on, let's go. Um, so that wrapped up round one, just a, an overall, not peace, but like I was playing my game at, at, on the PJ Tour, executing shots, and it came down to a 69, or it came out to a 69. So then round two comes, um, you know, again, I don't know how I'm gonna feel like cut day. I'm kind of like half believing I can make the cut. Actually, I'm like nine tenths, 90% believing I'm gonna make, make the cut, but there's still a little doubt that's this like, ah, you know, it's your first tour event, probably not gonna make the cut. But anyway, so we get to a, a slowish start, make bogeys on the two hard par threes, 13 and 16. And, you know, we're two over even for the tournament. I'm like, well, you know, it was, at least it's respectable. But then the other side of me was like, you know, George, you have a par five 17 coming up. You have the whole back nine, which was my front nine that I played really well the first round. Anything can happen. Well, three iron, three iron to 20 feet and cash it for Eagle to go from even for the tournament back to two under. And I'm like, huh, I don't know. We got a chance and then go to hole one you know hit a good shot there don't make birdie uh but then we go to hole number two par five beautiful shot up and down uh or hit, hit a chip shot at 10 12 feet cash it so now we're three under i'm like well we got some birdie holes coming and um fast forward to hole number five lace it in there to like four and a half five feet cash it so that gets us to four under with four to go and i see everyone I see carney i see everyone in the, in the gallery like checking their phones wife like you can tell they were like He's kind of on the cut line. And I, I knew that, which I, I kind of started laughing inside because I knew where they were. I'm like, oh, this is, this is amazing. You can't make this up. Like, of course, I'm right here on the cut line. And then, you know, again, six, a really good up and down, kind of a, kind of a sloppy iron shot, but we make up with a, with a great chip, great putt, three holes remaining, we're four under par. I knew six under was probably going to be the cut, five under had a chance. I'm like, well, you got a par five coming up beautiful drive like you got to hit the fairway and i did insanely beautiful three iron onto the skinny green to 30 40 feet and then almost make it for eagle and i'm like oh my gosh now we've made three birdies here now we're five under for the tournament and i'm like oh boy now the nerves are going to come we have a hard par 317 or number eight um and i'm like just please just get it on grass and then i'm the best 54 chipper in the world told them uh on youtube but like i believe i'm the best 54 chipper in the world chip it almost yeah, two and a half feet go to 18 hole number nine we're on the cut line and i knew it wesley and the whole camera crew's there i'm like oh, my God. here goes nothing and so absolutely stripe a ball a stripe a drive right down the fairway and then wedge it i was playing pretty conservative because i, I air milled the green the first day um and so i was like hey let's just play it 20 feet short and, and try to make a putt and hit at you know 85 yards easy wedge shot but in the, under the circumstances like we're trying to make a cut on the pga tour and hit it up there great shot didn't hit a great putt but again my only goal from 20 feet was the two putt i know it sounds crazy but like the last thing you want is like hiya have this thing go off in your hands have four feet knowing that if you miss you have no chance and so we lagged up there to shoot 69 68 in my tour debut it was unexpected yes but also at the same time the reason i played so well is i truly believe 
that I belonged out there and that I could compete. And you're seeing, and you saw that like, regardless of how I felt, my self-belief got me, it was not at the finish line, but it got me to a place where I could compete on the weekend in a PJ Tour event, which is something that is, is, as we're going into Q School, the second stage here next week for me, it's gonna be massive. The confidence that I, that I got from playing four rounds on a PJ Tour event, um, I know I'm, I'm saying it a lot, but like it's gonna, it's gonna carry over to Q School and beyond. Like whatever happens at Q School, I have no idea, but like next year, these experiences that I, that I felt from that one week are massive. So that leads us to the weekend on the PGA Tour. Um, you know, again, we come out, wasn't anything like, I, I wasn't more nervous, but I was like, wow, this is kind of cool. Like we got, we're gonna make a check, but also at the same time, let's see, let's see. Like we got nothing to lose. Off the rip, um, good shot, like kind of shaky, but then a chip in on 13, the part of like an insane chip in, like absolutely crazy. Gets me to, um, you know, one under. So we're one under par, we're, we're playing solid. We go to 14, 15, 16, like making some good pars, but then 17, par five, just a beautiful birdie, gets us to two under par. And I'm like, well, I mean, you know, it's just nothing crazy, but like just keep plugging along. But then the first like bad golf or stress, I made a couple bogeys on the back nine on, for being honest, not great bogeys. Three putted number uh, four, I believe. So that's first bogey, then made a bad bogey on six. So we went from two under, which, Again, we needed to get four, five, six under. We went, now we're even par playing three, playing seven. We have three holes left. I'm like, dang it, like, I know where I am, like, but let's just, hey, just be patient, not give up. Like, I know you'd want to be under par. You're feeling some stress now, but just, you're doing great. And then, and then the fateful seven comes. You guys saw it, I know you did. The highlights, like, it went viral on, on social media. Pull hook a three iron left because I was kind of half committed to it. And then the chip heard around the world with the 54 degree, mind you, blind up and over a hill, hit it nicely. I knew I did. Um, and everyone's saying, sit, sit, sit. And then it switches to go in, go in. I'm like, it's not going to go in. And then that moment, that split second where you hear the, oh, like eruption. And I knew I was like, I just made it. And it's like disbelief. And then you go up there and see it, it's, not, it's in the hole and you're like, yes, let's go. Um, Wesley heard it. Um, so I guess that's the two under. And then I'm, I should have birdied number eight, but again, we went from even, we fought through adversity, we got to the third round, we shot 69, and three straight rounds in the 60s to start um, my PJ Tour career. It's pretty, pretty special. Now to wrap up, like the last round, it was, I, I won't say I ran out of gas, but I think I was definitely more tentative, more tense on the greens, and I had three three putts. I only missed one green. Um, I think missed three greens, but I only had to chip one time the entire round, got that up and down. Um, but. I think the, the reality of like, I am playing for a paycheck that I've never, like way bigger than anything I've ever had in pro golf. I think you saw it on the greens, like tense. I was leaving everything short, had three, three putts. We ended up shooting one over par, which if you would have told me wind's blowing 20 to 30 miles an hour, I'm not super comfortable with my irons. The putter wasn't there. And you would have told me I would have shot 72 on tour. I was like, I'm, that round has recipe for 76 to 78 for sure. So that was very encouraging. I know it was, I left a lot out there. I could have shot 68, 67, made a few more thousand dollars, moved up the money list um, or the leaderboard. Um, but I was left encouraged that last round because I felt like I didn't have a good game at all. And I shot 72, which again, it's all in pro golf, especially a lot of it's about how good is your bad, your bad golf. And so having a 72 there, I mean, very encouraging. So all that to say, like, it was a dream. It really was a dream week. Like, and the, and the crazy thing is I feel like I could have, I could have finished in the top 20 there, which I know, I know it's wild. I make YouTube video videos. I've been playing some good pro golf, but like at the end of the day, I've never played in a tournament of that level before. And to think that I firmly believe I could finish the top 20 is crazy, but I did leave a lot out there. At the same time, I played some really good golf. So it was a dream week, like I mentioned. I'm gonna be forever grateful for the, to the Butterfield Bermuda Championship for letting me test my game at the highest level. Um, and it's something that's it's motivated, motivated, me, motivated me to try to get back out there. I wanna play another tour event. I wanna compete against Wesley. I wanna beat him in a tour event. Now, after all this, there's still work to be done. We can still get a PJ Tour Guard through Q School here. As we wrap up our time here in this, uh, we got a good practice session in here. So this is one this is, this is one last thank you to the Butterfield Bermuda Championship. You guys did something that I will, again, I'm never gonna forget this. You made my, I mean, you made a dream come true and I'm gonna be, for, like I mentioned, forever grateful. But today, we have we have a task at hand. We have Q School in a week and a half. First round's a week and a half. We get through there, we get to finals. We have a Corn Ferry Tour card, but the top five at Corn Ferry Tour finals 
get a PJ Tour card. We got work to do. Like my game's good. So let's let's keep believing. Let's see what can happen. And I mean, let's let's meet Wesley at finals. He just got exempted to finals, so it's just gonna be me there. But like, let's make some noise. Let's go and win Corn Ferry Tour second stage of Q School. Kindaloo Forest. Let's let's do it. Like, why not? But guys, thank you all again. Thank you all for the support through this whole journey. Like your messages, your comments, I've read them all and they meant, they've meant the world to me. So thank you guys for watching the videos, commenting, messaging, uh, made, it made my week out there a lot easier as far as like knowing that I had the support of all you guys uh, back home. And also thanks V1 Golf for, uh, for the sponsorship, for the, the support, for partnering with us the last couple of years and really being, being able to, allowing us to be able to, to, to call this, this dream a reality. Like to be able to chase PJ Tour Golf Corn Ferry Tour Golf, like without guys like you, without um, companies like you, I wouldn't be able to do this. So, you know, I've loved working with V1. I've used it my whole life. And so it's helped, it's helped me get to this point. We will have a link in the description. So go download the app, film your golf swing and heck, send it, send it in. We might, we might give it a look, we might give it a watch and uh, either rip your golf swing apart and dash all your, crush all your dreams or encourage you and let you know how good you are. So that being said, thank y'all for watching this video. Until next time, see ya.